What's up everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Tonight we're going to talk about something that... First of all, fix this fucking camera and I'm going to make this shit square. We're going to talk about something tonight that I don't think I've ever really spoken out against. Um, and again, you guys know that I don't speak unless I speak from experience. Like That's just how I am. I don't feel like I should be talking about shit unless I've done it, tried it, been there, succeeded at it, failed at it. Had someone very close to me that I was you know, around when they were doing whatever the case may be. Opiates, of course, was my thing for a good period of time, about four years. Started with uh, Vicodins, moved on to Oxycontin. Um, actually, went from Vicodins to Nubane, Nubane to Oxycontin, Oxycontin to heroin. And I... And I'm, this is going to be like a big fucking... This is taking a big chance talking about this, but you know what? I really don't give a fuck because I honestly... I have a viewpoint from not only was I involved with it, so I knew the people that were involved with the different drug... Um, I don't want to say organizations, but the different drug outlets. But I also know where they came from and how they got them and how they got them in the... Like, I also know more in depth about this black market, about how all this shit works, because I was involved in it, like deeply involved in it. And I had friends that were the people selling it and where they were getting it from. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Point is, I have some insight um, that I feel like most people wouldn't have. So we know that there's this huge opioid crisis going on right it's this big thing like we have this opioid crisis it's unbelievable the united states is fucking crumbling from prescription drugs right and leaf of faith came out with my good friend chris bell and he's you know he's talked about that before and documented it very well about the kratom situation with the, you know the drugs and stuff like that um and the way it all went down right is painkillers weren't the biggest thing around when I was like in high school like there was still Vicodin around there was Percodan it wasn't Percocet it was Percodan and there was a huge switch before Oxycontin actually got here and that switch was Vicodin itself was being prescribed more and more and more and more there was no Oxycontin yet so you had hydrocodone generic version of Vicodin and you had these other ones that were blue ones that were 10 milligrams I don't remember the name of them but they came in like a, a big white bottle like a You'd get the pharmacy and they pour them into like a little thing for you. There were big ass horse pills that were blue. Those are 10 milligram hydrocodones. And the dosages were going up on these hydrocodones. And hydrocodones came out that didn't have any um, Tylenol in them, acetaminophen and stuff. And then all of a sudden, there was the Oxycontin, right? The Oxycontin fucking slam, I call it, right? Because basically it just slammed everybody in the face like a fucking bat. It's like getting hit in the face with a baseball bat the way this shit came out. And it was being prescribed and prescribed. And I mean, fucking, we had a friend of mine who would go to a doctor and he was getting a thousand tablets from a doctor at a time of Oxycontin 80s. A thousand at a time. And he would do this a couple times a month. He was getting over 2,000 of these pills a month. And then he would keep half of them for his habit and then he'd sell the other half. So he'd sell 500 tablets a month. And I look back and I'm like, who the fuck would ever need to be prescribed a thousand tablets for any period of time, let alone like twice a month? That's 2,000 tablets. So to say that like the DEA and the FDA or whoever else was involved with this didn't know that that shit was being fucking slung like that is bullshit because they had fucking numbers that they checked pretty frequently. I, I believe it's every day of what these narcotics are being prescribed for and how much are being prescribed. So to say that they didn't know. Like, we had no idea this thing was out of control. Bullshit from the get-go was out of control. I mean, from the first fucking time somebody took an Oxycontin, the shit was out of control. And they pushed these fucking drugs, and then they legalized them and made them okay for a nine-year-old to take. That's like the latest thing that fucking I can't get past, right? No nine-year-old, don't give a fuck how much pain you're in, needs an Oxycontin. I mean, it's just, it's just how it is. So they're pushing these drugs, pushing these drugs, pushing these drugs. And, of course, people turn out to be fucking zombies, right? They're completely fucked up, and now what happens is they can't get the Oxycontins as much anymore because now all of a sudden these fucking companies that produce it and these doctors are prescribing it had some kind of a fucking epiphany and they decide like, I think we're doing something wrong. So maybe, yeah, no shit. For years you were doing something wrong, but now the people are addicted. So what they do is start cutting back on the fucking pills, like producing them. Doctors are not prescribing them as much anymore, not producing them. You leave all these people with painkiller addictions out there, opiate addictions, to fend for themselves. Well, the only thing that was going to happen was the illegal distribution of heroin. The only cheap available product, but the country wasn't flooded with heroin. So how the fuck do we now have, it's not even an opiate problem anymore. It's not an Oxycontin problem anymore. It's a fucking heroin and fentanyl problem now. So how the fuck do we flood an entire country 
full of oxy, uh, full of fentanyl and heroin, illegal drugs. We're talking metric tons of this shit being bust in somehow every fucking day to this country to keep everybody high, to keep them well. And people that you would never think about doing drugs in a million years are absolutely jumping to the heroin because it's their only option that they, they don't realize how bad this is. They're just like, I'm so sick, I need this. And like, you're not thinking straight when you're in there. Well, well, we're going to, hang on, we're getting ahead of myself. The heroin comes in, that floods it. Oh my God, this is crazy. Everybody's on the heroin now. Holy shit, this is crazy, it's crazy. And people started dying, they started overdosing because they couldn't figure out, much like my friend Timmy died, going from Oxycontin to heroin, like you're, you know you're taking 80 milligrams of Oxycontin. How much heroin do you take? You don't know how much is in there. So they wind up trying to figure it out and they overdose and die very quickly. Well, that's bad enough, right? Now that people are fucking you know, doing heroin, it's an illegal drug, which means they're on the streets getting it. They're doing fucking crimes and shit to get the drug so they're well, opens up a whole new ball game. They say, wow, we got this, this fucking war against opioids now. A war against opioids. Well, now it sounds like a war against the people that you cut off from the opioids you originally fucking gave them to. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Now, they come up with methadone, what they, they've had for years. I was on methadone. The Suboxone, which was a fairly new thing, but a lot of people fail with the Suboxone. It's supposed to be this great thing. I took it for about maybe a month and a half. Weaned myself off it and never took it again. This is supposed to keep people from wanting to relapse. Well, it doesn't fucking work. A lot of people fucking relapse. Matter of fact, they take the, um, the Suboxone and they get high with the Suboxone. So they really didn't, they, they, they made it look like they were trying to help people, right? And next thing you know, the fucking fentanyl comes around. This is not a pharmaceutical grade fucking fentanyl. This is shit that people cook it up in their bathtub somewhere. These new forms of called sufentanil, carfentanil, a hundred times stronger than regular fucking morphine, 500 times stronger than the regular fentanyl. You take one little fucking grain of salt of this shit and you fucking die. That shit hits the market, right? And now they go, well, fuck, now people are over, now we have this epidemic of people just dying from opiates, right? Meanwhile, every step of the way, you can actually track how this thing is being laid out. It's almost like a blueprint of how well to execute a plan, right? And now they go, wow, we got to come up with this fucking solution. So now the company that created Oxycontin is trying to come up with this other pill, and I think they already came up with it, that would get you off of heroin and fentanyl. But you have to stay on that pill for life. Like, you can't just come off that pill. It's almost like the Suboxone. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, so you're trying to tell me <laughs> these big drug companies created Vicodin, created Oxycontin, created a dependency to them nationwide, pulled the plug on it, and didn't do anything until all of a sudden the heroin and the fentanyl, well, the fentanyl came along. What the fuck is going on here? How do you think all that fucking heroin and that fentanyl is getting in the goddamn country? Think about it for two seconds. In order for them to create this pill to stop this chaos that people are actually dying just trying at once now, there has to be some kind of real knee-jerk reaction. There has to be something really intense happening for them to be like, we have to do this right now and make everybody just jump at that pill because they feel like they're needed or they're going to die, right? You're creating a demand for a product that now people can't live without for the rest of their lives. So how does this happen? Step by fucking step. They start out with the hydrocodone. And they see people are getting addicted to it, but it wasn't that big of a deal back in the day, right? They're like, okay, some people have problems with this, so we're going to, you know, say, take it every eight hours, don't use it for more than two weeks, and stuff like that. But now, the Percodan that we were giving them, which is hydro uh, oxycodone, we're going to have Percocet. That's a little bit stronger, right? So we're going to try to get them away from the hydrocodone, right, because we're prescribing too much of that shit. So we come up with this other painkiller, Percocet. They even start prescribing the fuck out of that. And now they're like, well, people are really fucking addicted to this shit. Like, fuck, it's getting even worse because now we have Percodan, Percocet, and Hydrocodone. There's three things out there now that are fucking hooking people. The Dilaudid's already been done away with. Hmm, what's the next step? Like, what can we do to get more people hooked? We'll make a product that's time-released, right? That you can get by the time-release by ripping off the coating or putting it in your mouth and scraping it off. We'll make a product that can also be broken down and injected. And we'll make it so that it's so addictive that you can't get off it. The side effects of coming off of that is worse than the hydrocodone and the Percocet. That's what we're gonna make because that's what we need in this world. We need more painkillers and we need more people to fucking be stuck on these fucking pills so they get more money. Well, now what happens is this shit gets way out of control. I mean, really quickly it gets out of trouble, but they don't give a fuck, right? Because they get the plan. That was step two was the Oxycontin. Step one was the hydrocodone shit. Step two was the Oxycontin. Or step one was the Percocet. Step two is the Oxycontin. Step three is cut everybody off. 
now you create a desperation. You create an emotional response to what's happening. Emotional responses make people act without thinking. Let's cut them off. Fuck it. We're going to start cutting back on this shit. People start freaking the fuck out. They're sick for days. They can't go to work. They're all fucked up. The only thing they can know they know is that if they get more of that fucking drug in their body, they'll be able to live a normal life and just be well. It's not even about getting high anymore, right? Wow. We fucking can't do that, right? We can't put the pills out because people just abuse them. So tough on them. They have to tough it out. Where did all this fucking heroin come from? They blame it on cartels and shit. They blame it on... You know, these these underground, under, you know, crime fucking families and shit like this. You still have to get metric tons of fucking powder through the border. In 29 fucking teen, we have satellites that could literally see this fucking label under my hat right now and read it exactly off my hat through that window, even though it's closed. We have a satellite that can do that. They're missing tractor fucking trailer loads full of heroin and fentanyl? No fucking way. No fucking way. If our country is so behind the times as far as technology that we can't find tractor trailers we can just get a bunch of fucking dogs and teach them how to fucking sniff out heroin that would catch the fucking trucks and I'm, you guys get what i'm saying i'm being very you know like grandest with it because i want to sh- explain to you guys how this fucking works so instead of having dogs or even these satellites or you know there's a fucking million different ways they could catch these trucks because i guarantee fucking to you there's large amounts not little amounts to flood america like it did it's coming in large amounts and it's coming in daily and there's only certain points of entry. You only have so many fucking places around that fucking, the entire country that it can come in. Even if it starts switching, guess what? We have border patrol. We have fighter fucking planes that could literally be one inside, one side of the end of the fucking, the country to the other in half the time of fucking normal flights and shit if they had to secure everything with flights. They could do it if they wanted. They talk about this crisis, people dying and families, like it's the biggest fucking thing that's killing people. It's like the fucking bubonic plague of 2019. But they can't figure it out. Because these fucking drug companies have something to do with it. I'm not saying they're manufacturing it, but I'm telling you right now, these motherfuckers have something to do with that fucking heroin hitting the ground here in America. I don't know if it's government shit. I don't know if it's fucking politics. I don't know what the fuck else is involved, but there's no fucking way. I'm telling you right now, I know where that shit fucking comes from. I know how much comes from there. I know all that shit when I was involved in that stuff. Nowadays, that thing has been amped up a billion times about what I knew back in the fucking day. So now it's like, well, how the fuck is this even possible? Now... The heroin is causing, oh, now we have this this outbreak of crime. Now it's even worse. People are moved, turning to crime. We need to fucking rip emotional response. Not only are they fucked up from taking the drug away from them, but now they're causing these crimes that are causing more fucking shit going on with them. So now they're like, well, this these people are getting arrested. They're doing fucking crimes. They're sick. All that shit's going on. Then it gets pushed into the media. Then we see it. Like, see, see what's happening? Look, these people are doing heroin. They're bad people. Like, you know, us big drug companies, we have nothing to do with this. It's not our Oxycontin. It's fucking heroin. They pointed at the heroin. But have no fear because we have the solution. No, it's not Suboxone. Wait a minute. What the fuck happened to Suboxone? I thought that was the best thing since sliced bread. No, no, we get this new thing because the Suboxone didn't work. People abuse that too. Everything you're making is opiate-based that hits those receptors in the fucking brain, which means that whatever the fuck you're making next to get them off the heroin is also addictive. And they could also use that to get high. The doctors are now prescribing tramadol and gabapentin instead of the Oxycontin. And guess what? People are starting to abuse those drugs. They're taking so much gabapentin, they're running out before their fucking script comes up. Two weeks earlier, they're calling the pharmacy. And the pharmacy's like, dude, you got two weeks left. Like, we can't fill that for you. What the fuck is going on? They're using that to cut the withdrawal symptoms of what the fuck was going on from the opiates. So now they're creating these other problems with the other drugs, and they have the solution that's about ready to come out. Meanwhile, they also approve another fucking form of painkiller. I don't know what the fuck it was. And when I was watching this this documentary on it, it comes in a syringe. You can't touch it because if you touch it, it will fuck you up and probably kill you. They literally only give it to medic uh, to combat people in war that when they're fucking injured and they're going to die, they are absolutely terminal. They only have you know five minutes left to live. And morphine is not working and whatever else. This stuff, it's in a syringe. You put the syringe in the person's mouth. You push it. The pill pops out in your mouth. It's a little blue pill. And they swallow the pill or it dissolves or whatever the fuck goes on. And it basically fucking puts them in a goddamn fucking opiate coma until they die. They just approve that for here in the U.S. And I'm like, I, <laughs> I've seen people with cancer dying. They put fucking Ativant in their IV and morphine or Dilaudid or something. like. They, they put them unconscious. There is no use for this fucking pill. 
There is zero fucking use. How long do you think it's going to be before that shit hits the fucking streets? Anything drug-wise is going to hit the streets as soon as they put it out. So you have these companies that are keep making stronger and stronger drugs that fuck people up that they know are going to hit the black market. They produce them in such mass quantities that they go out the fucking back doors that they can't be stopped or they just don't want to stop them. They then flood the whole fucking country with illegal drugs and it causes more crime and desperation. And now they have the solution. They have the solution for the problem that you fucking started. Like you're trying to tell me you didn't know about this shit. I had doctors tell me Oxycontin is not fucking, it's absolutely not addictive. I had another doctor give me samples of Ultram. Samples. It's a fucking opiate. It's a narcotic. Although you don't get high, if you take enough of it, you get high. And if you take it long enough, a week or so, you stop taking it, you get sick. It still works like an opiate. They were giving it to people as samples because it doesn't make you high with the dosage they recommended. Take fucking three pills instead of one, you're high. Like, I'm sitting back going, what the fuck is going on here? But nobody pays attention to that. They're all, you know, when that emotional response happens, everybody's wrapped up in what's going on at that time. And they're all freaking the fuck out and they're trying to figure out what's going on and they're desperate and all this shit. Nobody's paying attention to who's pulling the fucking strings on this shit. Nobody's paying attention to what the fuck is really going on. You think that they were able to suddenly, all of a sudden, out of the blue, when the opiates ran out, flood the entire fucking country full of heroin? And then flood it full of fucking fentanyl? What the fuck? Those drugs have been around for quite a while. If people wanted those things, they could have got them a long time ago. When I went to Mexico, they tried to sell me fentanyl in Mexico in tablet form. There was 100 tablets per bottle for like 100 bucks. And we were down there and um, what were we getting? We got those stupid Milka bars. I don't know if you guys know what Milka is. It's a candy bar. Anyways, you can get them in, um, you don't get them in America. You get them in other countries. So I always get them when I go to Mexico all the time. So we're in the pharmacy. And of course, I do all my steroid stuff in, the, um, in those pharmacies and shit too, right? This one, we happen to be getting a candy bar, which is what made it so weird. So I bring the candy bar to the counter. And of course, I, you know, I was, man, it was probably 220 pounds, whatever. Anyways, so they look at you and they hear your voice. You know you're American. They know you take steroids because they're looking right at you, right? And they're like, hey, do you want um, these? And he pushes the bottle to me and I look at it. I go, it's a little bottle. I go, fentanyl? I thought it only came in patch. He goes, no, no, no. Oh, Americans come down here and buy that all the time, man. It's good stuff. And I was like, my dad had the fentanyl patches. I don't know how bad they were. I had an ex-girlfriend that was addicted to the fentanyl patches. She would cut the fucking patch, push the gel out, eat the gel, and get fucked up on that. So, like, I know what fentanyl is. Why the fuck is there a tablet? Because you take two of these tablets, you're going to be dead. He's like, oh, Americans buy them all the time. And they bring them home. And I'm like, what the fuck? He was talking about the American drug dealers were buying them and bringing them home, crushing them up in like a mortar and a pestle and drop it on the fucking dope. That's what was starting to happen in like a couple of years ago. So I kind of stepped back and I'm like, that was in Mexico and it didn't make any sense because I hadn't heard about it here in the US yet. When people overdosed, they didn't know it was fentanyl yet. It was more of a, you know, the overdose on opiates, but then what was happening is there were so many overdoses, they were like, what the fuck is in these bags? And they started testing the bags of heroin and they found the fentanyl. So I was like, fuck, that's where it started coming from. Like these other countries are producing this medication and these drug dealers or whoever the fuck was putting it in the fucking dope. Mules, whoever brought it over to the U.S., were putting it in the dope and fucking killing people. They wanted to spike it and make it stronger, and they were fucking too dumb, and they killed everybody. So now I sit back, and I'm like, what is the answer to this? If you're having an opiate problem, you have to get off opiates. There isn't going to be a pill that fixes you long-term. There isn't going to be any kind of fix other than you getting off of them and working on what the problem is to making you use them to begin with. If you're one of those people that got addicted because a doctor gave it to you for an injury, you don't have as much work as the person who didn't have an injury that picked up a drug to fucking numb themselves from pain. And I don't mean physical pain, I mean emotional pain. It's two different things and two different paths. And if you're on either one of those, if you're on the one where you got addicted from a doctor, go to a fucking, I know sounds, go to a doctor, but go to a clinic, these private clinics that'll put you on something like methadone and taper you off the methadone, but be ready to fucking take that fucking fight because you're going to fight. When you finally get off that methadone, you are going to fight for your own life. That's all there is to it. But once you come out the other side, I promise, I'm telling you from experience, I promise it feels a million times better than before you even went on the heroin and opiates when you get off. Like knowing that you beat it and that it wasn't for emotional pain, which means you don't really want to go back to it. You're using it because you used it for the pain in your knee and then you're using it because you got sick. When somebody has emotional pain, they start using it because they are trying to numb themselves, you know, mentally so, or emotionally. So what happens is when they stop that and they're no longer numb and high, they now have the problem that's inside them, the deep-seated problem that they need to fix. And that is the problem that they have work. They usually don't do the work for that. They just get off and then they wind up relapsing. But guys, this is a big bunch of bullshit that has been fed to us. And there is way more going on than fucking any of us ever know. We're ever going to know. I'm telling you, I don't know how deep it goes, but there's no fucking way. 
You ever see like walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck? Well, listen, there are steps that you can follow this whole fucking thing exact. And these fucking drug companies keep popping up with the next solution, the next solution, the next solution. Don't think they didn't have that fucking solution 20 years ago. And that solution had to be set up with this fucking problem that winds up going right down the line and giving them the ultimate control in the end. Money. It's all about money. BowserTrain at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. BowserTrain.com is a blog. It's that you know what the fuck they're doing, Bicep, and we are out.